why Elastic loves Terraform? Um, and I, I don't only want to make it about the love, but also a bit more about the background and why and how we got to that. Um, so those who don't know what Elastic is, we're the company behind Elasticsearch, Kibana, Beats, various other products. Mostly for automation in that world, we care about the centralized server components like Elasticsearch and Kibana. So that is giving us a pretty wide surface of installations. So when I try to think of that, um, it's a huge set of things. And those who have, as I have crossed out, we are not doing anymore because it was just unmaintainable. But the, the surface alone to do all these things got so large um, that we have way too many people doing that. And we release quite frequently. And you need to build, test, and then push out all those artifacts. And that became a lot of hassle, especially around the things like any automation with Chef, Puppet, and Ansible. They were always lagging behind. It was kind of hard to keep them in sync and keep them going. Um, that's why I also added like these little stars. Like Some of those components are more like best effort and might be lagging behind. Um, Puppet, for example, we have given up and the community picked up because that's what they needed or somebody needed. And then we even have that as a cloud service. And so we have this huge surface. And we were thinking, like, how can we keep this sane and make this work for all of us? Um, and how can we actually get the most value out? So the question or the main problem was to focus on the right things. Uh, and for us, that was more or less Terraform. And then the question came up, why Terraform? It's since we're focusing on cloud a lot, Terraform is almost like the given to provision all things cloud. So that was kind of clear. And then it was like, OK, we, we write a lot of things in Go internally. So this is fine. We have the Terraform provider for cloud. Why not make a second provider that I also show you for stack? So you can configure everything that we have in our stack server side, basically, through Terraform as well, just because it fits in and you have like the two things that fit together well. So the, the Hello World example of how you would provision the cloud is basically you just say, like, in GCP, give me this um, and give me these resources, and you're done. It can, of course, be a bit more complex. Like, this is uh, one single cluster. And I could then, for example, connect a second cluster and then have two clusters um, go cross region just to sync their data and to have more resiliency, lower latency, wherever you want to go. Um, so that is easy. And that's the, the thing about Terraform. I don't have to tell you this. This will just work and do its thing. Um, what I think is more interesting is the, the stack provider that we are building. Um, so because everything in Elasticsearch and Kibana is a REST API, you can just plug that REST API in. And you can just say, like, this is where my server is living. So these would be from my Elastic Cloud deployment on, on cloud. But it could also be any local installation. So you can just plug that in. So it covers anything on premise and in the cloud. Um, so you can connect that stack provider. And then you could do something like, here I'm doing an interest pipeline with a, a Grok processor. Everybody remembers what Grok was? It was to parse your log messages. Anybody enjoying parsing log messages? No? All of those who of you who are saying yes, I, I always call it the Stockholm syndrome, where you get so used to um, writing regular expressions that you think it's the right thing to do. Um, Sometimes it's still necessary to write those regular expressions. And that's kind of like what we're automating here. It's, it requires a bit of, of plumbing because of how things are structured. Uh, but this would be the example of how to get this pattern to parse a log message into the stack. We could even test it in Terraform automatically that this actually runs in my cluster. We have a simulate API within it. So we could actually check that running these Grog patterns works in my cluster. So that's the, the thing that we can um, do for Terraform. So we have the cloud component, and we have the stack component. And in combination, they just make your configuration life much simpler. And it makes a lot more sense than throwing Chef, Puppet, or Ansible on top of that as well. Um, we also love the, the command line. So one of the things that um, we always try to do is like we try to have like a simple curl command for our demos. And for example, this is how we would pull out from our Terraform provider um, with JQ. We would get the endpoint, the user, and the password, which are just set for you. Um, so you could run those, um, which I think is always nice for demos. Um, and sometimes we also need hacks. So for example, we currently don't support the Kibana API to configure anything in Kibana. Um, but we can actually run that through a local exec 
and we just run a plain old curl command. This is very much a hack and probably not what you want to do, and hopefully we'll get those APIs together. But in my demos, if I want to automatically set up something and have like a dashboard preloaded and index patterns or whatever, um, this is how I can throw that together to, to actually make that automated and start up. So it's hacks, but anything that has a REST API, as soon as you fall down to local exec and curl, you will be able to make that work in a very ugly way, but it's still totally possible and still um, probably nicer than if you tried to do the same thing in Ansible. Um, I could show you the Ansible for comparison, but I don't think anybody wants to see that. Um, and we've recently seen, and that was very recent, that, for example, Azure has their um, package for everything, and they actually don't wrap our uh, Terraform providers, but they have written their own, which are not really feature complete, I think, yet. Uh, but they have full package to wrap there. So they also pulled all of that into Terraform. Um, and that's pretty much it. <laughs>